The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Central. I'm Justin Allegri. San Jose State men's and women's basketball team both in action last week with two games apiece. The women's team now 4-4. Four and four. They were 1-1 one and one last week. And San Jose State men's team, they've lost seven in a row and are 1-8 and eight on their season. We'll talk to both head coaches on this edition of Spartan Sports Central. But first, let's head back to the highlights against Southern Oregon with the women's basketball team. San Jose State taking on Division II opponent Southern Oregon at home last week. Although they are Division II team, a team that was 7-0 entering the night. First half with the score tied at 12. The dish from Sharice Thomas to Rachel West, a pure three, and gave the Spartans a lead. One thing that the Raiders did well was battle early. Good post move from Autumn Duran, and she scores the and one, which would tie it at 17. Spartans would answer by going on a 12-5 run, which was capped off by a mid-range game from Emily Van. Bree Park later would display the NBA range three, launching it from well beyond the arc and burying to cut the lead to six for San Jose State. Next chance, though, a great setup for West in the corner for three, again off the inbound. She had three threes in the game, and you've already seen two of them in the first half. Now on the defensive side, where the difference was really made in the game, the Raiders turned it over 24 times, and the Spartans love the fast break. Then off of Rihanna Bird rebound, it's West taking it on the fast break and scoring it with the foul to make it 46 to 32. San Jose State. Spartans did give up a few easy buckets in this one as a result of good ball movement down low to Brianna Anderson. Right back at it is Bree Park with range again knocking it down from three, but the Spartans led by 15 points at the half. Start of the second half, can't leave my my lad open for three. Well, they did and she buries it and the lead was 18 points for San Jose State. Then a driving kick out to Thomas with the fortuitous bounce to Paris Baird. She scores and the foul making it 69 to 51. How about Thomas with the moves and the speed? Head fake, dribble drive, and a soft touch at the finish off the glass. And the Spartans were just rolling in this one. Brianna Berg back to the post game. Blocked once, but used her strength to get back and finish under the rim. She would finish the game with 16 points. Remember I said turnovers were key in this one? Cunningham again with the steal and the finish at the other end. The Spartans had 13 steals overall in the game. Alexi Smith only played 22 minutes for the Raiders, but now 14 points off the bench with nice moves like this, making it 81 to 56. But San Jose State still with a comfortable lead. The Spartans just kept hitting shots. Paris Baird missed a three, but perfect rebound out to West, who does not miss. And with nine minutes to go, a 20 point lead for the Spartans. Check out this great effort from West. First the block, then scrambles to get the ball and throw it off of a Raider player before going out of play. Beautifully done. Smith went back to work, though knifing through the D on a drive for the lay-in. But at this point, the Spartans had it all but wrapped up, finishing quickly with the bird lay-in. Allie Betancourt got the Spartans past the 100-point mark with a late open three, and the Spartans would cruise to the win, 110-91. to it was not the largest amount of points this year, but certainly a good showing. At home, shooting 45% with six players in double figures, led by Terea Cunningham's 25 points. Spartans had the double-digit lead since the 10:39 mark in the first half and cruised to the victory. After the Spartan win, they then hit the road against Colorado, and Rebecca Woodbury scored 19 of a game-high 28 points in the second half, including seven of the team's final nine points. But the team lost for the second time this year in overtime to a Pac-12 opponent. San Jose State only netted four points in overtime, losing 97 to 89, another tough loss for the women's team on the road. We'll take our first break here on Spartan Sports Central. When we return, we'll look at the men's basketball highlights in the Clash of the County against Santa Clara. More to come when we return. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. The 
Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. I'm starving. Where's the food? Who's hungry? Una Mas. No way. Every party can use Una Mas. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection. And our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Una Mas. We taste better. We should invite her again. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. Well, the men's basketball team had a tough battle against the Broncos of Santa Clara in the Clash of the Counties. Losing in this one, but let's go back to the highlights from the event center. The men's basketball team took on crosstown rival Santa Clara for the 104th time in the two schools' history. Spartans trying to break a seven-game losing skid. They started off hot with a tremendous ball movement from low to high, finding Rashad Muhammad open for three and giving San Jose State an early lead. Muhammad would lead the Spartans through the first five minutes here. Somehow Isaac Thornton found him open again for three and it made it eight to three San Jose State. Spartans continued the hot pace as Muhammad scored the first 13 points points for San Jose State before Jaleel Williams nails a three here. Then Denzel Johnson for the Broncos had a nice answer with a touch off the glass, making it a three-point game early. How about Frank Rogers going to work, backing down his defender and scoring at the rim? But wait, there's more from Rogers. Here's a ball fake and a drive and a two-hand finish at the rim. And the Spartans led 20 to 15. Nice aggressive move from Rogers. Santa Clara would not go away though. Jared Brownridge nails a wing three-pointer. And both teams were really firing on all cylinders in the first half. The turnovers though then started for the Spartans in this one from Isaac Thornton. Broncos work the breakout and Clark buries a three to give Santa Clara a 21 to 20 lead. Later in the half with under a minute to play, Clark drive and a kick out for three from Brownridge again. And he would not miss. He was killer in this game for the Broncos. Spartans quickly respond though with a Jordan Baker mid-range J that allowed for some time for Santa Clara. They push the floor where Clark tries the lay-in, but it is tipped back to Matt Hubbard sending the teams into the locker room tied at 32. Start of the second half of the Spartans defense continued to play well. A high pick for Brownridge, but a tremendous block from Isaac Thornton. But then Jordan Baker gives it right back to Santa Clara and they would score with Johnson underneath the hoop. Turnovers were critical in this game, especially the second half. This is the kind of night it was, though, for San Jose State. Here's a block from Ryan Singer and an offensive board for the Broncos. They cycle it around, but miss a three, and then again get the offensive rebound. And it goes out to Brownridge, who knocked it down, giving the Broncos a three-point lead in the second half. Spartans would be down eight when Baker has a great pass to Frank Rogers, who really did everything in this game here. He hits the triple to keep the Spartans close. Still a three-point game when Clark steps into another three and hits from the perimeter, and that is when the Broncos started to pull away. Spartans had a last chance to try and pull within one score, but Baker misses. Then Thornton gets a great look, but can't hit the three. And that would do it as Santa Clara hits some big free throws down the stretch to go on to win 61 to 50. Spartans get 15 points from Rashad Muhammad, who was perfect in the first half, but only hit one field goal in the second half as San Jose State committed a season high 20 turnovers, losing their eighth straight game of the season. We'll take another break here on Spartan Sports Central. When we return, Coach Jamie Craighead of the women's basketball team will be in studio to talk about their games. More to come on Spartan Sports Central.
pieces come together, and there it is, our new car. So that's how Santa fits it in a sleigh. Wow. Wow. The magic of the season is here at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Lease the 2015 GS350 for $449 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. I'm starving. Where's the food? Who's hungry? Una Mas. No way. Every party can use Una Mas. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection. And our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Una Mas. We taste better. We should invite her again. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. Now joined by San Jose State women's basketball coach Jamie Craighead. And coach, although another tough overtime loss against Colorado in last week, still a good a good place to be, I think, for the team and a good barometer for the team. Yeah, definitely. Um, going on the road uh, at elevation and, and playing a, an opponent, Pac-12 opponent, that's had a common interest mm -hmm. with other teams in the conference. Um, they're 6-1. and one. They're a quality basketball team that's going to win a lot more games, and we took them to the breaking point, right. so it was good. Well, and then talk about Becca. I mean, she really got it going. 28 points. She played 40 minutes, too. Yeah. Uh, talk about her play. You know, she had been struggling a little bit, yeah. and uh, she she really just listened. We're like, just shoot it. You know, don't <laughs> think about it. And um, she did that. And those games, she always seems to step up when we really need her to. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we needed her to in that type of game. I mean, she's very skilled, and she could play on that team. Right, um, right. So, yeah, she stepped up and played great minutes for us. And was, was it, you think, in the second half, a little difference defense you guys saw? You know, the shots weren't going down for you guys in the second half. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we didn't press as much in the second half. We were limited. We had, you know, some injuries in the middle of the game that mm -hmm. kind of shortened up the rotations, and um, we got a little tight. But when we would get to the rim, we were fine. You know, they couldn't really stay in front of us. We got to the free throw line 36 times or shot 36 mm -hmm. free throws. Um, but, it, you know, we go in and out. It, women's basketball is about runs, right. you know. We shot the ball well, and then we wouldn't, and then we would. And they were kind of similar, um, but they made shots in overtime when they needed to, and we didn't. Take us through that play right before the end of regulation where you had a couple options between Ture and Becca yeah. and, and, and what you guys were designing in that play. Yeah, you know, I wasn't even going to call a timeout because Ture had the ball in her hands, mm -hmm. and um, she was running what we call head tap, so she was asking for a ball screen. Um, but her teammates looked like they didn't know what they were supposed to do, so I called the timeout. We ran um, another similar ball screen action that's an overloaded side, so mm -hmm. it clears out a side for Trey and Becca. Mm -hmm. Becca sets the ball screen. Um, it allows T to take a quick two or for Becca to pop out and hit a three if they overplay okay. Terea. So we thought we got our best two options and two players that we would want to take the shot. And you had that conversation with her, hey, take the three if you, if you want? I mean, she, uh, yeah, I mean, we said <laughs> the three is open on the pop, but I think for her, you know, at Utah, we took a quick three that we should have gotten to the rim right. and it could have won the game. And so it was a different situation. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. were tied at that point. We weren't tied at this point. Right. Um, but I, I think she was trying to do the smart thing and mm -hmm. you can't fault her for that. She made a great play. Uh, we just didn't have the guns in overtime. Well, and then, and then there was some injuries that occurred in, in this game, too, or some, some nagging injuries yep. going along. Sharice and Anaya. Talk yeah, about. Reese sprained her ankle on Monday, played against Southern Oregon, and uh, when we flew, her, her ankle blew mm -hmm. up pretty big elevation-wise. And then when you don't really come down from elevation and you're right. at 6,000 feet, um, 
it was bothering her. She couldn't move around. She felt like she was going to hurt our team. So mm -hmm. I looked back at the bench about three minutes in the game. She's like, I can't go. <laughs> okay, good. So changed up some rotations. And it's been a long week. It's been a long eight days for them, four right. games in eight days. And uh, we get to regroup and play Davis now on Wednesday. So we're excited. So who did you go back with uh, because of the short bench, I guess? Um, Anaya ended up playing 35 minutes, which is the most minutes she's played all season. Mm -hmm. and, and really, she's got those shin splints that are nagging her. But she fought through it and uh, played really well. I mean, she was dying after the game. And obviously, we'll take it easy on her this week until right. we get to the game on Wednesday. Well, and you do have this game, uh, UC Davis at home, big home game for this team. Yeah, definitely. UC Davis is playing pretty well right now. Um, they started the season slow. They'll run some matchup zone defense. Mm -hmm. um, they run the Princeton offense, so it's a little bit different look than we've seen. Right. Uh, everybody's got good size on their team, but you know I don't know that they can really defend us all that well and, unless they stand around his own and we just mm -hmm. jack shots. Well, do you have to take a look at, on the Spartans' defensive side for against a Princeton team? If some players haven't seen that style of offense, it's yeah. got to be something you have to take an extra look at, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, the good thing about what we do offensively is we work on back cuts a lot in mm -hmm. our offense, so the back cut part of it is what really like kids struggle with. Right. Um, so they see that at least with our team, mm -hmm. and so that helps us. But yeah, definitely got to show them some things this week before Wednesday. Well, now a couple of players that were on Davis's team at one point in time, Van and Baker, yeah. and obviously maybe talk to them about trying to control their emotions yeah, in this game. There's going to be some emotions, that's for sure, <laughs> on both sides. You know, right. I would think for them, they're going to feel the same way since they both transferred out of the program. But um, really, it's just another basketball team that uh, it'll be a good game, and, and we need to, we were at home, we need to, to win a basketball game mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Um, so they'll be ready to go. I know that they'll be but, ready. And, and one thing that's been just phenomenal about the Spartans this year. They, they turn their opponents over and you guys have a lot of assists to go along with it. And one thing that Davis does a lot is turn the ball over. It's got to yeah. be a pretty good matchup. Yeah, it will be. And we'll mix up our defenses a lot so they don't get comfortable. Mm -hmm. If they start to look like they can, you know, break one press, we'll get in a different one. But we're getting better in the half court as well defensively. And we did a pretty good job against a big Colorado mm -hmm. team. And we're not going to see any teams that are bigger than the Pac-12 opponents right. that we've seen. So well, it's good. Ultimately, Coach, all these non-conference games, are you getting prepared for the conference season? Yeah. Where do you feel like you're in that preparation you know right now if you look at the standings um, you know we're in the middle of the pack mm -hmm. and um, I mean that's good because ultimately you have to have confidence going right. into the conference season but I think our schedule was wired to get us ready for the Mountain West I mean the Colorado game the Utah the Cal mm -hmm. those types of teams are teams that we'll see they don't have size across the board in the Mountain West like those teams right. do um, but I think we're I think we're ready. You know, we get a little bit of break. We have three games left, and uh, we get Nyree Harris back after the Davis game, and um, we get Ellie Stevens back, mm -hmm. and we get Emily Shale back for conference. So I think our team really could uh, take off and uh, do really well in the Mountain West. All right, that's San Jose State women's basketball coach Jamie Craighead. Thanks for joining us, coach. Thanks, Justin. More on Spartan Sports Central when we return. Throw it. I'm starving. Where's the food? No way. Every party can use Unamas. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection. And our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Unamas. We taste better. We should invite her again. So that's how Santa fits it in the sleigh. Wow. Wow. The magic of the season is here at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Lease the 2015 GS350 for $449 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful 
so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. Now talking with San Jose State head coach Dave Vocek. And coach, uh, another tough week, but probably the biggest story of that week uh, coming out was the injury to Jalen James, and obviously a, a big blow to this team early in the season. Yeah, he uh, yeah he he tore some ligaments or had some ligament damage in his ankle inside of his ankle against UC Davis, and uh, uh, unfortunately he's not going to be back, and so. Uh, We'll probably get him a you know medical hardship and red shirt so to speak. Well, and how do you go about approaching the medical red shirt? Because you know it is an injury early in the season, but the silver lining to it is he gets another full year now if you request that. Yeah, he does. He gets a full year. It, you know, there's rules. You got to play uh, under a certain amount of games, percentage of your games. I think I believe it's thirty percent. Um, and so we he he obviously didn't play in, in thirty percent of the game. So. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate for Jalen. It's unfortunate for us as a team. Sure. Um, uh, cause I thought if, you know, we had him the other night against Santa Clara, I think things might've been a little bit different, but whenever you lose your, your point guard, your, your quarterback, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, it's a tough blow to your team. Well, how is he handling it? And, and how is the team handling it? He, he's handling it great. You know, um, he's very upbeat. We just had practice today and, and, uh, this morning and he's upbeat and picking guys up and, um, the team, I, you know, I think the team's down from it a little bit. They right. got hit with one of their buddies going down. But uh, as I told them, Justin, we got to – other guys have to step up and make plays, and we got to fill that void. And you and I talked about it too, but it, it's really a time where the team has to show their true character as individual players and as a team. Absolutely. And and, and we'll play that position by committee. Uh you know, we got Isaac and, and we got Jordan and Danny Mahoney. When, once he gets better, his back's messed up right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So um, so it'll be a by committee, but uh, we'll keep plugging away. We had a good practice this morning and continue to see how it goes. Yeah, I guess saying on the injury bug, uh, what, is, what is wrong with Mahoney and what is his time frame? Yeah, Danny's back is uh, his lower back. He's got issues there, spasms mm -hmm. and stuff. So um, I, I don't know the timetable. Um, I know we won't have him tomorrow night, right. um, but uh, maybe later in the week and or next week. But in, in that situation, you have to give it time to settle and, and just relax a little bit. Well, Coach, you, you want to draw positives even though out of a couple of loss. What is it you took out of positively from the week against Davis and against Santa Clara? Well, you know, I thought we played extremely well against Davis. Uh, you know, we made some baskets and we took care of the basketball. Mm -hmm. Now, we had breakdowns defensively. Our defense wasn't as sharp. Uh, so, and that's what we talked about to the kids uh, today about. And then we come against Santa Clara, we have the turnovers, our defense is solid, mm -hmm. um, and we just can't give up those opportunities, uh, those possessions that were given up. So we have to put a complete game together and, and be consistent in all areas. Right. Uh, like I told the kids, it's never going to be a perfect game, but we can't have the extreme, like 20 turnovers. Mm -hmm. or six straight breakdowns defensively right. so um, and that's something we have to continue to work for and, and I think part of that's too is you know we've had injuries different lineups and and, and guys have you know we haven't been consistent mm -hmm. enough there so I think that plays into it as well that's got to be the hard part though is to find some consistency when maybe you really can't have much consistency with injuries and with changes in the lineup yeah it does it affects you yeah. there's no question I mean we're going all preseason with with Jalen at the one sure um, and, and so now you don't have that now I'm throwing Isaac who is getting all the reputation repetitions from the two and now he gets thrown at the one right. so um, um, but that's some, that's that's how it goes. You know, guys get injured, guys get hurt, and other guys got to step up, and you got and you got to make those plays. Well, it seemed like there was there was better post production in, in especially the Davis game, and maybe a more well rounded Frank Rogers in the Santa Clara game. I know he fouled out, but it seemed like he was doing things well on both sides. Yeah, he was. You know, uh, I had to light a fire under him against Santa Clara the other night, and then he comes up with the big block and he goes down and he finishes a play at right. the other end. Right. So um, he, he's starting to get there slowly. Uh, um, I just wanted to be a little bit quicker mm -hmm. in pace uh, than what he's doing it at. But I thought Leon played well. He missed a couple easy baskets. Um, but he's getting position. He's doing a good job. And we just got it, – it comes with experience. That's only his seventh game, uh, sure. eighth game playing. Um, over here, so it's going to continue to grow and continue to get better. And we got to understand uh, we're in a building process, and I got to understand that too. I get frustrated at times, 
but we have to understand it is a building process. Well, it seems like he also tried to motivate Frank by bringing him off the bench, and like what you did with Rashad Muhammad last year, and it seemed to work for the game that he did. Yeah, I, I sort of like that. I mean, some guys have that mentality, like they want to get the feel of the game first and then come into it. Right. Maybe that's what Frank is, and, and I think I'm, I'm feeling that from mm -hmm. him, so I, I might continue to stay that way. Well, and speaking of Rashad, boy, he had a good week. He came back in and had 20 points against Davis, 15 against Santa Clara. Didn't miss a shot in that first half against Santa Clara. It seems like he's back on track and right where he wants to be. Yeah, we, we, he, he's, he's scoring the ball. He's seeing the ball well. He's seeing the rim good. Um, you know, we need him to score a little bit more in the second half like he did in the first half. Not as many, but um, score some. And we try to run some stuff for him. And they did a good job. They took him away and they, they pressed up on him and, and tried to take him out of it. But um, he's doing all he could do right now for us offensively. And I can't be more pleased with him on the offensive end. And then looking at a guy like uh, Isaac Thornton, boy, he, he's he's been great on defense this year, but really has struggled on offense. What have, what have you seen from him that, that he has been struggling on offense? Well, his role changes. I've played him at the point guard. I've played him at the wing. I played him at the small forward. Um, and that's hard. Maybe that's unfair, but he's a smart kid and picks everything up. He's yeah. one of the kids that can do that. But I think right now, <clears throat> excuse me, he's dealing with a confidence issue. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to be positive with him, get him in the gym, work on his shooting, uh, make sure he's seeing it through the basket, right. following through and all that. So well, he's the type of guy too that'll put in the work. Absolutely. He's got great character. Yeah. He's got a great work ethic. Um, he's just going through a tough time, and, and every player goes through it at some point in their career. And the only way to get out of it is you gotta gotta work at it, and you gotta make shots in, in the games to get your confidence back up. Right. Well, coach, this has been a, a tough stretch with the amount of games and the amount of days you've been playing too. So kind of nice to get a couple of games this week with a little more paced out and, and spread out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and we were away early, as you, as as we alluded to before, uh, being up in Anaheim and then at Fullerton, and but uh, it. It is nice. Uh, the good thing is we have a quick turnaround, like I told the guys. You played Saturday, you know, we got a quick turnaround Tuesday. But it, it's more about us, Justin. It's just like we alluded to, is, is trying to put a complete game together. And I don't care who we're playing. Um, I like our chances if we put a complete game together. San Jose State head coach Dave Wojcik, and your next wake up with Wojcik is December 16th. So fans get an opportunity to I can't to wait. I, I know you can't. I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be pretty good. you got anything in store for that? No, I, you know, I'm going to try to do, I, I like to try to do stuff a little bit differently. And right. I got something up my sleeve for that one too, so maybe we'll have a guest guest appearance by somebody, but uh, we'll do something different. San Jose State head coach Dave Bojic. Thanks, coach. Thanks, Justin. All right, we'll take a break. More to come. <laughs> and all the parts come together, and there it is, our new car. So that's how Santa fits it in a sleigh. Wow. Wow. The magic of the season is here at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Lease the 2015 GS350 for $449 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. Throw it. I'm starving. Where's the food? Who's hungry? Una Moss. No way. Every party can use Una Moss. Fresh from the market ingredients is the essence of great tasting Mexican food. We grill our chicken and steak to perfection, and our fusion of traditional Mexican dishes means delicious, healthy choices for you. Una Mas, we taste better. We should invite her again. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook. Find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. 
Welcome back on Spartan Sports Central. That does it for this week's episode. Once again, San Jose State's women's basketball team will play UC Davis at home this week. And the men's team, two games, both at home against St. Catherine and against Seattle. Tickets are still available by calling 408-924-7589 or visiting SJSUSpartans.com. And this Saturday's game against Seattle with the men's team will be on 1590 KLIV starting at 630. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you next time.